lost in all of the, you know, plus, 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 minus, 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 what's going on. So we're just gonna look at the big picture, just kind of keep it very simple and vague. Um, so we're gonna use the idea of like humps and bumps, but I will reference uh, the first and second derivatives as well, okay? But this is meant to just be like broad, and then we can work out some specific examples later, okay? So let's say I have a curve. something like that and uh, it doesn't matter what happens up here it could keep going it could curve back around it doesn't matter and down here same thing right we are just looking locally within this little window okay so nice and smooth curvy like this so even as I sketched this from left to right right naturally I'm going up 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 and then down 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 and then back up, 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 right? So it's almost like a little roller coaster. Or if I just kind of like pushed a ball up and then let it roll down and then you kind of have to push it back up, right? If this were like some kind of, I don't know, hill or something. So that's the idea of increasing, decreasing, and then increasing again. But naturally you'll see that there are these turning points here one being right at the very tippy top here. So if I push, 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 there has to be some sort of turning point. Oops, sorry. There has to be some sort of turning point where it just for a split second stops and then it starts slowly rolling down, right? And same for here. It kind of falls into the center, the kind of pit here. But then if you keep pushing it, it will go back up. But for a split second, it just kind of hits zero. It stops, right? So those turning points are special, important points to study. They're so important, you might call them critical. And that is what they're called. They're critical points. So um, when you find these critical points, this is where I do have to reference the first derivative. If you have the equation of a function, so it's just going to look like an equation with a variable. Um, in, when you take the first derivative and you set it to zero and you solve typically for x, it, x is usually that variable, um, you solve for when it's zero or when that first derivative is undefined, you get these special x values. They're the x coordinates of critical points. And those would be the locations basically of these points. But the thing that you're going to have to differentiate is that differentiate, um, but uh, when it is zero or undefined, what you'll notice is that if you have a point that is at a maximum, a local maximum, so here you're at the tippy top, so that's a local maximum, this is at the bottom, so a local minimum, right, it's like a turning point here, turning point here, if you have one, they will occur at one of the critical points, but not all critical points are local maximums or minimums, and that's why we have to test, that's why we have to use the first and or second derivative tests to see, to determine if those special locations are minimums or maximums or neither, okay? So when you find that first derivative, set it equal to zero, um, or when it's undefined and you find those x values, you can find the locations of these points. So by location, I mean, I mean we have to find, we have to use our x, y coordinate plane to locate them. But with the big picture idea here, it's just wherever these two things are located. Okay, so these are special points. They happen at special points. And now, basically, we use the first or second derivative test to determine if those special values are indeed maximum or minimum or neither. So if we actually have the picture already like this, we know that this is a local maximum, it's at the tippy top. This is a local minimum, it's at the bottom. But by bottom, I mean that it's kind of like this turning point, this turning point. So we're not talking about like absolute minimum values. We're just saying if I zoom in really, really close, this would be like a minimum point. And if 
I zoom in very, very close here, that would be like the top, tippy, tippy top. So, the first derivative test, the way we can tell if it is a maximum or minimum, in this case, like I said, if we have the picture, we can already see, we know that this is top, this is bottom. But, if we go the other way, and we know that we have special points around here, and we want to test, for all we know, we, it could be at the bottom at this point, and the top at this point, right? So if we solve for when the stuff is zero, it's like for a split second it's changing. Do we know if it's changing from, um, you know, if we're going from up to down or down to up? And that is actually the first derivative test. So basically what we do is we see, we kind of look on either side of these points on either side. We kind of find test points to represent what's happening on either side. And if we notice that the graph is increasing on one side and then it's decreasing on the other side, then we can conclude that our point is a local maximum. And to determine whether or not it is increasing, that's where we do the first derivative. So if the first derivative is greater than zero, we know that it is increasing. And then on the other side, if f prime of x is less than zero, we know that it is decreasing. So, but the big picture concept is up and then down means you're at the top. And that makes sense, right? On either side. Same thing here. If it's down and then up, you know you're at the bottom. And so you take these representative points, those are the values that you, uh, that you choose to calculate f prime at those values, and that's where this plus, 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 minus, minus, minus stuff comes in, or minus, 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 plus, 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 because that is the sign, like the positive or negative sign of the first derivative, and that tells you if your actual function is increasing or decreasing. So up and then down, so positive then negative for the first derivative means you're at a local max. Uh, negative then positive means you're at a local minimum. And if it's just negative, negative, nothing. And if it's a plus, plus, nothing, right? It has to be a turning point. Nice. Okay, so, um, the, so that's the first derivative test is testing on either side. But another way to look at this is at this tippy tippy top. Let's look at the actual sort of curvature of the picture itself. So instead of picking points on either side, what I can notice is that this is like a sad, like it's downward facing sad face, right? So this is nice. It smells like lemon <laughs> scented markers, but this takes me back to middle school. But everywhere here is downward, right? It's like, it's downward facing, as in this would not hold water, right? Water would spill. So it's downward like this. But then somewhere here, it kind of, on this side of the, on this side of the curve, it goes upwards. So there's actually like a turning right here, where it kind of goes from down to now holding water. So up here, so this is the happy face, right? Right. So now it's facing upwards. Now the second derivative basically tells me if it's downward facing or upward facing original graph. So, of course, second derivative, fancy, fancy, but it's really f prime prime, meaning the derivative of our first derivative. So, our second derivative of our original function. So, if that is greater than zero, the fancy word for upward facing or holding water, or however you want to think of it, um, is concavity. So, if it's upward or downward facing, it's concave up or concave down. So if f prime prime of x um, 
at a particular x value so at a location if that's greater than zero it's concave up at that point and if it is less than zero it's concave down at that point so if i chose a location like here 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 our graph is downward facing so f prime prime at this x value this x value this x value is all negative 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 and then positive 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 and then like we said there's some point here where it goes from um negative to positive that's called an inflection point where it equals zero but we don't have to worry about that so the second derivative test in this case if we know our location of our two special points what we can do is plug in f prime prime x so we plug in that location that x value into f prime prime x and if we know that um f prime prime x is positive then our graph is going to be concave up at our point at our location but if that means that everything is facing up then we have a local minimum because we're at the bottom of that everything is up higher than our original thing whereas for here if we look at that critical point and we plug in f prime prime of that location that x location and it's negative then we know that we are at a local maximum because everything is less it's pouring down so it's less than our original point so local maximum if the second derivative is um less than zero local minimum if the second derivative is greater than zero so notice for the second derivative test though we don't have to test on either side right we're not picking test cases we are just looking at the concavity so whether it's up or down at a particular point and we might as well pick the location of the critical points that we already calculated before when we set the first derivative equal zero or undefined right so the second derivative test is convenient because you don't have to test you don't have to have test points on either side of those um those special points you can just plug in the location the x values right into the second derivative and look at if that's positive or negative and determine if that's a local maximum or local minimum so that's nice however sometimes you get that f prime prime x equals zero in which case um you can't determine um whether or not it's a local maximum or minimum and then you have to go back to the first derivative test anyways because if without fail you go from plus to minus or minus to plus you can actually determine that and if neither like we said it might not be either right but we do know if we have a turning point um it's going to happen at the critical points but if we have critical points it might not be a local maximum or minimum okay so when we do analyze a graph finding critical points to start with by setting f prime of x equals zero or undefined and solving for x that's a really good place to start and will help us um it's just like another tool for us to use when we're just trying to sketch out graphs of equations that we might not even recognize or 